thank you for having me on your program, but also thank you for the work you're doing. I myself identify as a person with a disability. I was diagnosed in my 50s as being neurodiverse and have an ADHD. But also I'm blessed to be a mother of um, two grown children. And my eldest is um, a daughter with Down syndrome. And then I also have a beautiful son who's now a special education teacher. And I'm very proud of him for that. My beautiful husband passed away a couple of years ago due to dementia. Um, and it was a really hard journey to walk, but there was beauty along the way as there is. I um, now have a new uh, person in my life who's a gift. I think my husband sent this wonderful man to me. But I bring these things up because um, my family's not really that abnormal. We all have diverse families. We all have beautiful souls that are in our family. But I also bring it up because my daughter has influenced my work. I started um, in this field in, in 2000. I was in the banking industry for many years. As I had worked my way up to an executive and my mom was proud of me, but um, I didn't really feel I was doing enough. I really wanted to add more value in the world. And so I moved in this field and started focusing on accessibility and disability inclusion, focusing at first in the United States and then looking around and saying, well, I think we have a whole lot of opportunities globally with this. But I also believe that God blesses us with um, abundance so we can help other people. I was very proud to be part of this community. Um, a lot of people, times people think being disabled is a bad thing and being part of this community is bad. I remember when my daughter was diagnosed with Down syndrome and just being so sad and not wanting people to know because my friends were treating me like my baby was broken. That made me sad because my baby girl wasn't broken. My baby girl is perfect. And so what we walk as families and parents and, and, and individuals, as society keeps telling us we're broken and we're not good enough, um, it really hurts our souls a bit. So I appreciate your work and that's why I do my work. I, I will also say that I um, have created multiple companies. Tech Access was a company that I um, was very proud of. It was a technology company focused on accessibility and the majority of my employees were technologists with disabilities, many self-taught because still we do not educate people with disabilities like we should, especially, I mean, we're better at it now in the United States. We're better at it in the UK now. There's still a lot of work to be done to meaningfully include people across the board. Um, but then I created a company um, called Through Global Impact, and it is a social enterprise. It's a for-profit company. I wanted to be a for-profit company because I didn't want to be a charity. I want you to do this because this is the right thing to do for the world and for your business. Because I'd work with a lot of corporations, not because you feel sorry for us. Don't feel sorry for us anyway. Um, and so I created um, three years ago an organization, it's a nonprofit called Billion Strong. I created Billion Strong because the only way we can actually move forward with real meaningful change, I think, is together. So how do we come together? Oh, that would be impossible. There's over a billion of us, but we have to try. What I see is maybe hundreds or thousands of people that are talking about including people with disabilities passionately, with fire. We we want to be included, but but still there are billions that are not being included in these conversations. And there are things that are happening all over the world to people with disabilities that are horrible and horrifying. You know, when when natural disasters happen, who do you think get hurt worse? Absolutely. Our community, our families, we yeah. do. And so what I want to try to do is I want to get us to convene and come together with pride. You are managing the global impact, uh, you know, as a platform, I heard Billion Strong as another platform. So tell us a little more about it. This sounds very interesting. And I think it will help a lot more of us to sort of, you know, listen to this a little more carefully and see where our synergies lie. I'll start with RU Global Impact, and that's www.ruhglobal.com. So what it was was a consultancy company that was focused on global disability inclusion and accessibility. And we worked with the, some of the largest corporations in the world. We've worked with governments. I've worked with UN agencies, really supporting 
let's make sure people with disabilities are included. So what we do now is we work with leaders all over the world that are working on major, huge issues that they want to make sure that people with disabilities are included. I mean, countries doing this because what this can't be is a separate situation for the people with disabilities. No, you've got to make this a value-based thing. So there's a lot of changes happening and it's exciting and um, interesting, but my heart lies with billions strong. I just have such a need laid on my heart and my soul to build billion strong for our community. And not so that, that we can compete with anything else that's out there, but because what I don't see is an organization that's global that comes together and says, all right, let's come together and I'll help you, you help me, you help them, You let's help each other be seen. Billion Strong is about convening because one thing we have, there's a hashtag that we use a lot, it's called nothing about us, without us that mm. is our battle cry i think we should build a world that works for more of us i think we need to hear from the people with disabilities that are in countries other than the us and the uk so that we can hear we can get a broad i mean we need the us and the uk we need more of everybody billion strong is trying to be that we're trying to open up so that our whole community can be more discoverable so that we can support our entrepreneurs with disabilities. We can support anybody that's building products and services for us. We can support groups like yours that's trying to make sure we're included and that we also have, um, you know, we have access to education and employment and all the things we need. I think what, what, what I'm hearing from you is that you're trying to create a global aggregator of resources, of, of organizations who work in the space of visibility to create more inclusion. Well, it, you're, you're partially right mm -hmm. <laughs> because yes, but it is not just for disability inclusion experts. This is truly for the community. This mm -hmm. is for anyone that has lived experiences with disabilities. So what, what we want to do is we want to tell our stories. We want people coming out. We want siblings of people oh. with disabilities. We mm. want them to have a voice. We want we want all of the intersectionalities that go mm. with us. We want women with disabilities. We want black and brown women with disabilities. We mm. want women with disabilities, men with disabilities, men with disabilities that are part of the LGBTQIA. So we want it diverse intersection and we want to gather. We want to gather. We want mm. to gather online. We want to gather using our hashtag. Hashtag billion strong, hashtag we are billion strong. And then mm -hmm. whatever you're posting, whatever work you're doing, use the hashtags so we can be seen, oh, so we can be discoverable. It's almost a celebration of our diversity, Understood. but it's, yeah. it's a big undertaking, but we also want mm -hmm. to convene groups. And I'll give you an example. One mm -hmm. time there was a problem with Braille that really needed to be solved in a digital way. And all the blind organizations were trying to solve it themselves. Somebody got together, they created a convener, they brought these groups together and they worked on it. They solved it together. I'll tell you one reason why I feel it sounds good. It's, it's because I've always believed that we are stronger together, no matter where you're right. from. Right? And no. that is where no. I feel this whole concept of creating inclusion, even for the community is when imagine we've never thought of it that way. You're actually trying to create an inclusive community, right? For those who are desiring inclusion in the world, right? So how have you been going about? Where are you in this whole process? What kind of help do you need? Please shout it out so that, you know, we can have more people Thank coming you. forward. I'll give you an example. I told you my daughter has Down syndrome. And I remember, I remember I was speaking at a national Down syndrome conference. And there was like 4,000 families that attended this conference. And I said, listen, if nothing else, nobody else just has 4,000 families here in the United States. And there were global families there as well. But if nobody else but the 4,000 families that are in this audience right now, if we if we all got together, we sent an email to the CEO of a big corporation saying, 
thank you for doing this or please don't do this. You don't think they'll listen to 4,000 people that took the time to write? Of course they will. We are so strong together. But we have not convened. We haven't come together. So now we're splintered and we talk and then we compete with each other. And, you know, this one group's got more success. And so they get all the money, but it never comes. I see it, it's discouraging. It's just discouraging. You don't like the way the world works now. What are you doing to make it better? One thing you can do, you can join us. What do we need? Of course we need funding. Everybody needs funding, but we really do need funding. We're going to start featuring all of our partners out there. We, we have uh, um, partners from 106 countries, and we want partners in every single country and also every single state. So we've got to convene and we have to support each other. We'll have a speaker bureau out there where corporations can come and see who they could, you know, use as speakers. But we'll say to the corporations, do not come and ask them to speak for free. Don't you dare do that. They mm. are speakers. They should be paid like anybody else. You're mm. going to ask security um, experts or privacy experts to speak for you for free? No, you ask us because we have a cause. Stop it. More mm. than anything, go to the website, sign up, www.billion-strong.org. Be one of our global advisors. Mm. Let's support caregivers. That's another thing we're taking on. We pay our caregivers horribly. You can mm. make more money working at a fast food restaurant than taking care of a human being. Mm. Whatever. This is wrong. Why do you feel inclusion is so important for all of us because I think unless and until people out there know why we crave for inclusion they might not even you know support us right because somewhere it's a very quiet community for the rest of the world you know they all feel right. that oh you know they're managing they're struggling but they're managing somehow but I think each of us need to voice out the need for inclusion for all of us like they ask me Ki, Munisha, your daughter has a rare disease why are you talking inclusion and why don't you just keep stay focused on just your daughter's ailment and look after her medically and take care of her health. You know, that's how short-sighted it gets at times. What's your take on, on, on this? The reality is you're dealing with humans, okay? So maybe you are listening or watching right now and you have no experience at all with disabilities. Um, but the reality is if you live your life long enough, you absolutely will. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but the reality is as we get older, you know, we, we acquire disabilities. You know, there's all kind of things that happen. And so what you really need to do, and this is what I'm advising and, and guiding and not just saying this, we have specific things that they can do to make this happen. But we really have to make sure that every environment, whether it's digital or built or a policy or a system, works for all human beings every single human being. Now, you know, the good news about that is we actually know how to do this now. We know how to make sure AI is fully accessible. We know how to make a building fully accessible. We know, we know how to do this as humans. We are so yay, but we actually have to have the will to do it. And we have to say, no, you are not going to build that courthouse in our community. And it's not fully accessible to all of us. On top of it, we're going to have no choice but to do this because we're aging societies all over the world societies are aging dramatically um here in the united states just using one statistic we have something called aarp it's called the american association of retired persons um and they start at age 55 we decide you're old at 55 whatever so, so at 55 they automatically enroll you and you become a member according to them according to their statistics um 67 percent of their members have disabilities like i'm gonna give love to lloyd's of london i am not a customer of lloyd's of london but they know how to treat their customers right and what they did was they created these programs for their customers with disabilities and they're like wait a minute, these are really cool services. So they open them up to all their customers and their customers are eating them up. That is what inclusion is. Inclusion is we all can really be included and I don't even have to be included. Oh, Absolutely. Deborah, you might need an accommodation. If I need an accommodation, I should be able to go on to the website hmm. of my company and I should be able to tell, you know, the technology what I need and get it. I shouldn't have to go beg for it from a human exactly. being. Right. So what is inclusion? All humans get included, no matter what age, no matter where they're from, no matter what language they speak. AI is going to allow us to do all this stuff. 
It is not okay for me in the United States, the beautiful United States, to see families who have children with disabilities and they cannot afford their health care and they are forced into bankruptcy. They lose their homes. They, th this is not okay. This is not Absolutely. okay. Hmm. That doesn't sound like a developed country to me. So as we're saying developing, developed, I don't even know what that crap means. But hmm. I would say this. I, like you, am a mother with a cause, but... I do believe we're stronger together. We Absolutely. collaborate. Absolutely. We got to support each other. We can't just care only about our children. We got to care about the other children too, the other humans. Mm -hmm. We've got to convince ourselves and society we're not broken just because our souls decided to be born with disabilities. Our souls wanted those experiences. Absolutely. What if this is a gift? I think two things, Deborah, two takeaways <laughs> from whatever, whatever you mentioned is one disability is not only from birth or due to an accident it's a part of human life right it's a part of every human's life and hence yes. we cannot we cannot call ourselves a section of the society right because it is a part of every human's life. other thing that i got uh listening to you is uh you know since we uh, are the ones who understand inclusion the need for inclusion we are the best right. teachers for it Right, we're the best drivers for it. Absolutely. At the end of it. Yeah, and then somewhere, yep. uh, sensitizing the rest of the society who feels that no, this belongs to only somebody. You know, it's a part of somebody's language and not everybody's language. I think we can be the best ones to actually guide them that no, it isn't so. It it, it just translates to everybody's life, right? So excellent, Deborah. I think uh, you know these basics help people to plug in from wherever they are in their you know life's journey into each one's right and that is where I think this kind of discussion get, becomes very very rich one last question for the day what is uh, your ask right what is your immediate ask from everybody around because you've taken on a mission Deborah and hats off to you for doing that I think you know you 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 I mean in spite of all the struggles that you are you probably would have faced which I can only fathom that the least that everybody else can do is lend their voice right that's the least and the most inexpensive thing that everybody can lend but what is your specific ask from everybody around you <laughs> what a beautiful i love the way you said that thank you very much it's a really beautiful thing um my ask would be that everybody go to www.billion-strong.org and register yourself and then get everybody you know to also register. You don't have to have a disability. Maybe you're just a person that thinks it's okay for all humans to be included. Every single time somebody else joins us and starts using our hashtag. I can tell you, we need funding. We need corporations to come and support us. Blah, blah. Honestly though, what we really need is the numbers. We need mm -hmm. the numbers. We need country partners. Our country partners are organizations of per, for persons with disabilities. So they're OPDs. Only we don't want just one organization. We want the countries involved, and you got to start. And so we need mainly the best thing you can do is just join our free movement, billion-strong.org. Use and follow and um, be active with our hashtags: hashtag billion strong and hashtag we are billion strong um i think that's the best thing there's so much we could do together honestly that is the fact we are billion strong right? just the fact and, and, right yeah. we're a billion strong we could do anything together this is probably one of the many 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 conversations that need to be have you know had in this uh, on the subject but i'm glad that we connected i'm glad that we figured we're speaking the same language you know we feel the yeah. same way and that there is a need for you know working together nobody's asking anybody to you know switch paths and and, and leave what you're yeah. doing and run in this direction i think parallelly there are a lot of things that can be done people humans are human beings are innately multitaskers right and we're already doing that yeah. so why not also start working in this direction is is the cry right when this is the need of the yes. hour and uh something like climate can affect all of us globally so does I know, uh, I know. you know so does the space of uh you know uh disability because it is like we said it it's a part of everybody's life and it is the most yes. unattended part of our lives so let's I make know. something right in this direction thank you so much Deborah. Okay. please take care of yourself reconnect very very soon done thank you all so right, much thank you have a good day thanks ahead. to your audience bye -bye.